today we're going to be talking about some rules for differentiation. And these rules we're going to be using the entire rest of the year. So you really need to memorize and understand these rules. The derivative of a constant is zero. Now the power rule. This is a basically a shortcut. So we don't have to use limits after today to find derivatives unless I tell you to use the limits to find the derivative. So the power rule, if you're taking the derivative with respect to x of some function where n is an exponent. You bring the exponent down in front and that becomes a coefficient and you can multiply it to any of the coefficients that are in front of the x and you reduce the exponent by one. Now what you can do is you take the derivative if it's a constant being multiplied to a function like 3x squared, you take the 3 out in front and then you just take the derivative of the x squared. So the derivative of 3x squared with respect to x would be equal to 6x. And that's a lot shorter as you guys can tell from what we had been doing previously. Sum and difference. So when you're going through and you have a big polynomial, you can just go through and take each one of the functions, each one of the terms, derivatives separately. That's essentially what that means. Okay, so some examples. Derivative of a constant. Derivative of that is equal to zero. Derivative of a constant is zero. Now the derivative of this next one, bring down the two in front, multiply it to the constant, so that's going to be negative 4t plus, bring the one down, multiply it to the three, which is one, reduce the power by one, so that becomes t to the zero, which is one. See, notice how each one of the exponents are reducing by one. Okay, find the derivative of each. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to write all of the, like the root as a fractional exponent. And I'm going to write the x to the fifth as an exponent. Now when I take my derivative, bring down the one-fourth, reduce that, by 1, so that's negative 3 fourths. Bring down the 3, multiply it to the 5, reduce the exponent by 1. Negative 5 times a positive 7 is a 35, reduce the exponent by 1, we get negative 6. Now writing it in a little bit of a simpler form, we would have 1 over 4 times the fourth root of x cubed minus 15x squared minus 35 over x to the sixth. Product rule. Product rule is if you have Two functions that are being multiplied to each other, it's leave the first alone, derivative of the sec second, plus leaving the second alone, derivative of the first. You can't just go through. This does not equal f prime of x times g prime of x. You have to go through and you have to use our product rule. So therefore then, This is like f of x, that's like g of x, h prime of x is equal to, so I leave the first alone, derivative of the second is 4, plus leaving the second one alone, derivative of the first Now, let's simplify. 
And simplifying, just a matter of distributing everything through. All right, so I have negative 24x squared, 12 and 12, 24, minus 20, 4x, plus 15. Similar to the product rule, there is a quotient rule. So our quotient rule is a little bit more complicated. So I there's a saying that I always say. Every time I do the quotient rule, I have this saying. Low, low, d high, minus high, d low, draw a line, square the below. So it's bottom, derivative of the top, minus top, derivative of the bottom, draw a line. You don't take the derivative of the bottom, but remember to square it. Don't forget that squared. Okay, I have a quotient here, so y prime, low d high minus high d low, draw a line, square the below. So let's simplify the top. We can actually leave the bottom unsimplified. I'm okay with that, but let's simplify the top. So I have 5x squared plus 5 minus 10x plus 4x, and that should be a 10x squared. I was worrying about my negative too much. Okay, so y prime is equal to negative 5x squared plus 4x plus 5, and then it's okay if you don't multiply out the bottom. Okay, does that curve have any horizontal tangents? Now these are questions I like because you have to think horizontal tangent. What would happen if we had a horizontal tangent? That means the derivative would be equal to zero. So I have to find my derivative. And then I set my derivative equal to zero. I'm going to factor out a 4x, so I'm left with an x squared minus 4. And then you set each one of those terms equal to 0. So we have x equals 0 and positive or negative 2. Now, graph that on your calculator, and hopefully you see that your graph is going to have horizontal points of tangency at 0 and positive and negative 2. Our next example, we need to write the equation of the tangent line for the function. So first we need a point, so we have to find f of 1. When I plug in 1, I get 1 minus 3 plus 1, and then 1 plus 2. That is going to simplify to a negative 3. Now, to find the slope, remember derivative means slope, so I have to find the derivative here. So our derivative of our function, we have a product rule. So our product rule said, leave the first alone, derivative of the second, which is 1, plus
leaving the second alone. Derivative of the first. Now, I don't need a simplified version of this. I just need to find the value of the derivative at 1. So if you don't have to simplify, don't worry about it. Okay, so let's look at here and see what happens. This piece becomes a negative 1 plus 3 minus 3 is 0. So f prime of 1, or our derivative evaluated at 1, is negative 1. So then I write my equation of my tangent line. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And that's the equation of our tangent line. Higher order derivatives. So first derivative, some notations for our derivative. You should know that y prime equals dy dx. Now the second derivative, or y double prime, I often call it, y double prime, This first one is what we see a lot, or really the second one. The second derivative of y with taking the respect of x twice. Third derivative. And then the nth derivative, so like the 487th derivative, the nth derivative, you would put the number that you're trying to find the derivative of as the exponent, and then that would be our notation. Okay, find the first four derivatives. So f prime of x, 15x to the fourth, minus 20x to the third. Bring the three down, three times two third is two x squared. Now I take my second derivative The third derivative and then our fourth derivative because it would get a lot there would be a lot of tick marks there so once we pass three we just write four the numeral So there's our, our first four derivatives. Our next example, I give you some information. We have to find f prime of 2, given all of that information. So first, and I want you to show me this work. I want you to show me that you know how to find the derivative of this in notation without plugging in 2 yet. So that's just following our basic rules. Now I want you to show me plugging in the two. Please show me all of this work so that, A, you could get some partial credit, but two, so that you're showing me that you understand what you're doing. Now g prime of two, g prime of two is right here, that's negative two. And I want you again to show me all of these substitutions h prime of 2 is 4, so I have negative 4 plus 4, that's going to be 0. Now for the second one, notice how this is one function times another function. So our derivative, and really you can do the product rule either way. Honestly, I do it backwards of what I have written in this 
presentation. I usually do derivative of the first, leave the second alone, plus derivative of the second, leaving the first alone. Really, that's the same thing as I had written. So then we want to find f prime of 2. At the times. Okay, so let's look and see what we have. So f prime of 2 is going to equal g prime of 2 is up here. That's negative 2. h of 2 h of 2, not h prime of 2, h of 2. Now h prime of 2, h prime of 2, 4. And then g of 2 is 3. So we have that is equal to 2 plus 12. And that is equal to 14. Okay, please make sure your lesson summaries are submitted on time.